सो हेलो एवरी वन आई एम ऋषिकेश पवार करंटली आई एम सर्विंग एज अ फैकल्टी इन स्कूल ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इन अवंतिका यूनिवर्सिटी उज्जैन एंड टूडेज टॉपिक इज अबाउट कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द रोल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग बैक देन एंड नाउ सो आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज फ्रॉम कंप्यूटेशनल साइंस टू द क्रिएटिव कंप्यूटेशन and uh, it's it was uh, the lecture series of one of uh, my class that class is introduction to computing so originally this term computer was only meant for uh, for the people who were operators on the machines which was uh, which were built by the IBM those days so there were two machines mark 1 and mark 2 so it was the collaboration between harvard university and and the IBM so during those collaborations they were developing this machine and for that machine to operate the people uh, were used to sit for a long day and used to type a punch cards so for that uh, this term was originally been coined so now you could see that there is a, a wonderful uh, machine in front so it was the basic innovation which they built during uh, 19 uh, i think uh, 45 and uh, this uh, machine is ibm automatic sequence c- uh, controller calculator where uh, you could see there are different components associated with it so there are components like a shift registers there are components like relays there are components uh, like typewriter these all were combined together to generate uh, the code so it was again the project uh, of the academia it was not uh, the project of the industry per se but it was to truly was the product of academia and that is why we have to uh, study the computer science in uh, any university setup so now you could see there are uh, very good uh, instances where you could see there the there is this bug so the term bug was actually introduced during the working uh, of the mark 2 so while uh, the mathematical operations were happening that time one of the moth got stuck into the relay and that relay actually got stuck and Uh, the uh, entire operations of of that mark 2 got stopped and uh, that hindrance actually have produced lot of problems in actually generating the program so this was the first instance where you could see the bug uh, was got introduced now uh, you you might know this person and i could uh, i could see uh, john arnold he was the first person who was actually uh, was uh, developing the co- course on computational development and actually the role of uh, him was to uh, nurture the importance of creative computation and uh, he was the first person who was having this creative design team and being a mechanical engineer he was very good at uh, creating uh, design which actually had some creative or sympathetic aspect because earlier the designs were t- totally uh, meant for you know the functional purposes now there is this imp- sympathetic factor where you have a people uh which uh, you are introducing to your system so we will go through the background of our today's session so we are going to talk about the creative computation what computation means and how it works so uh you might be knowing there are different programming paradigms programming languages across and one of the programming language was c back then which was the low level programming language again but then the things got changed then there there are precursors and the languages like c++ java and python got developed now in web technologies we could refer to some other languages but yeah for the system development we were used to uh, the c++ java mostly so now uh, if you want to uh, develop a c- concept of uh, let's say if, if you want to design algorithm if you want to create some computational programs then in that case you could have to go and study those uh, uh, syntaxes and that that i believe is really important but the thing is being a designer being a artist it was very much difficult back then and now also to learn any new language so what what's the way by which we could understand the basic fundamental notion of this language so i will just go and uh, uh, go through the study of uh, the professor john meda from the mit media labs so actually there is this language processing and there is this platform processing so processing works on very creative aspect so it was developed in the year 2001 and it was very simple brainstorming session that happened in uh, the mit media lab so people were sitting together they were discussing how to make people educated for the creative programming so what they did was they brought this sheet of paper and on that paper they have uh, uh, they did some doodling and after doodling on that sheet they uh, then they spent lot of time uh, looking at different paradigm like c++ and their uh, imperative languages and then this uh, goal came out of this paper 
so that paper was about the teaching language to the design and art students and that was mainly for how to make them programmable and how to make the students write the program so why we should consider having uh, this particular uh, programming language now so basically uh, when you look at programming languages the first thing came to your mind is maths and i believe this maths actually is really cruel and uh, uh, b- back then only mathematicians were the good programmers now it actually it's not a need to be uh, to know the mathematics per se so uh, there is this combination of uh, mathematics but again you will learn this mathematics while while you code in processing so this combination of positive departures from the way programming is usually taught so we have to take the positive departure from it because the way we are learning the programming concepts or let's say for being uh, for that matter mathematics also so we have to actually uh, shift our way of learning so uh, being a programmer it it does not mean to write a code and uh, get the output on console so what we can do is or what we could do is we should look for a graphics and interactions so before we learn about data structure and test consoles we should go and study about graphics and interactions so this was actually was the problem earlier so people were writing the codes and uh, they were getting output in terms of uh, text and the numbers and basically as per my knowledge the numbers are very abstract so no one could uh, get any information from the numbers so numbers could only represent some significant amount or value but if you have a graphics in front then you could i think make sense of the world so uh, for that uh, people have developed libraries also and it was allowed uh, to use libraries uh, uh, back then for the creative designers and engineers so one could uh, use the libraries and they can reutilize the modular functionalities of the code in the amazing way so cons of conventional programming paradigm we will have to look into this so programming courses usually typically structured and those were theory based now what we need is visual interface and animation that is basically what now nowadays is called as desert and usually this was deserts were served after you finish your meal so uh, we should not do that so these were the cons of the conventional pro- programming paradigm in academia it results into the dropout after a first lecture or a long word i i, I believe many of uh, the students uh, were sitting in the classroom and uh, they were just uh, wondering like why what the hell we are actually looking at this concept so there were like uh, uh, professors who were talking about uh, some ide some programming languages and they were talking about uh, let's say some library some packages and some package managers some installers now because of this uh, many housekeeping activities the students were very much uh, i think concerned about the way they are learning so they were actually dropping out of the computer science courses and it was resulting into the frustrating night before the first assignment deadline and i believe the first thing which students learn in the classroom is hello world so that's what we are going to discuss in this classroom so progra- programming is an artistic medium in its own right so we will have to understand the programming is not something which is mathematical term or mathematical way of doing the things it is something which is very artistic thing if you are designing some program it basically you are solving a problem for humans or you are solving a problem for a particular system so if you are solving the problem then you need this creative brain which actually uh, should solve that problem creatively so what researchers are saying in that view we have to look into that so according to the many researchers and this what study says the attitude of many artists and designers towards information technology has been best ambivalent and worst hostile so what does that mean so basically uh, we want to th- things to work but at the same time we also want those system to be usable and useful if you want the system to be useful in that case you should actually think of a creative sort of a programming otherwise it's very difficult to design a good solution and years of practice developing a particular motor skills now i believe like people are using adobe or and other softwares but this software is actually helping you out to do the things which actually uh, i think uh, they have in their system so if you have if you want to do something if you want to create something if uh, you want to make some uh, creative arts then in that case you are relying completely on adobe but if you want to develop something of your own art or own functionalities then in that case it would be difficult so years of practice you develop motor skill actually those these are traded by reading the software manuals and pressing of buttons that's what john mayda is saying so he is a famous uh, again graphic designer at media lab and currently serving at microsoft so his perception about 
the coding is like it's not like uh, you just uh, bring a developer and ask him to do something so if we if you ask them to use a tool particular or a specific tool then he could use only those functionality which were available in that tool if he or she wants to develop something which is not in the scope of that tool then in that case he uh, would have to go and uh, do some other housekeeping activities so i believe we should not go look for a tool we should go and create our own tool or a platform so what actually students learn in creative coding so basic idea is so understanding the fundamental ideas and techniques of writing computer programming languages toward utilization and in the range of art and design so basically why a specific discipline of art and design so computer science and engineering was i i like i said earlier that this discipline was mainly developed by the physicians and the uh, and the uh, mathematicians so that actually uh, caused many problems and this this is why people were reluctant to use this coding languages now we are focusing on art on art and design so algorithmic thinking is one of the component procedural literacy was one of the component that should be emphasized so preparedness for industries and practices where computer language competency is increasingly important factor nowadays you could see uh, now it's a era of artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning per se so there are products like now i uh, also got introduced to devin so devin could write their own programs and could launch it on the website or a portal but the thing is we also have to understand this platforms are built using programming languages so i think the one of the programming language the important role of python and the julia was really of importance so industries are are actually needing this particular technology so we have to work on those so we have to be very much prepared for this technology so what was missing in the earlier curriculum so the conventional approach of uh, the thing is i think uh, this was the first program of 1974 written in the bell laboratories in memorandum so hello world was the first thing which uh, programmers they wrote and this was i think i believe in 2024 also people are writing hello world as as their learning medium but the thing is we should now shift our paradigm from hello world to something else so we have this text in so text in means once you write a program basically you are asking uh, id to get uh, my text and you have to you are producing output as a text so this interaction is i believe is something which is very abstract so now what processing does is the output of processing looks something like this a uh, emoji so it's a hello world of processing basically you could see what you are writing so there is a text in you write your code as a text there is a visual out you code a procedure visuals in windows and there is this mouse interactions so here the interaction is not with the abstract information the interaction is actually with the with the context the context is the graphics so this is really of importance now we will look at very scientific research so there is this study by the ncbi so ncbi what it says because they have this cognitive research uh, laboratory and cognitive research studies so according to them so basic learning requires intermediate visual feedback so what does that mean so when you write a code when you write something you are getting output in terms of number but if you want to validate that you would have to go and do it on your paper right so to avoid that you could always refer to graphics so that is one of the reason why cognitive researchers are doing research in terms of visual visual feedbacks so processing is the only language who follows this paradigm absolutely not there are many other languages so in 1967 the logo programming language was developed and logo programmers write instructions to direct turtle around the screen and produces shapes and design and believe me nowadays the python and uh, their libraries also support a turtle library so you could go and simply write a program that could create something on the screen so that was one of the reason so that's what i said earlier that ncbi did this research and what they said is visual feedback is really important so once you write a code you are not wondering what is going to be your output you are actually going to see your output you are actually going to interact with your output so john meda has this uh, famous book that named is designed by numbers i think everyone should read that so that has introduced the computation to the visual designer and artist with a simple and easy to use syntax so syntax is it's it's like a basic structure of any programming so you should go and actually 
look for that syntax so while both of these languages are wonderful for their simplicity and innovation but their capabilities are limited so processing actually is the outcome of one of the research group in MIT media lab that media lab is aesthetic and computation that was born in 2001 and the research group is actually established in Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT and I think we should refer to aesthetic and computation group so as I told you it is a platform now the concern here is whether it is free so it's not a free or it is not something which you have to pay a lot of money the basic thing is it is an open source language so it is a different category altogether so what open source platforms are so open source means the source code of this technology is very much open to develop or for the developers to work on so processing processing is the open source platform where student and artist and designer and architect i think hobbyists and engineers could work and create different sketches different artifacts so you can go through the community of uh, the processing and so there is this website processing.com you could uh, look into it and uh, you should uh, create something of your own so now a common misconception that processing and uh, its community fiddling around so people are out using processing from day one and to day 65 also now it is used in the web applications now it is used in projects and music uh, exhibitions and museums also exhibiting installations on the public places also so there are wide uh, ranges where people are using this particular technology now there are many courses across the globe those are taught using processing so there are disciplines or so there are programs like art design and technological university they are actually uh, promoting processing as a platform so courses powered by processing so you could see there is this uh, course offered by CIID, Copenhagen Institute of Information Design. So, where uh, they have these projects on processing. Then there is Road Iden School of Design. Then there is University Arts London. Then there is this Royal College of Arts London. Then there is this Adelaide. So, Think, Create and Code is the one of the platform where uh, I think students are uh, doing really well. So, how these courses are supporting the good outcome so these outcomes are really important so physical computing offered by CIID introduced dedicative hardware interaction so it's not only about software guys it's also about the hardware so hardware is equally important so because the way you are developing something it is actually for a particular machine so that machine need not to be a computer or a laptop that could be something which is an automation platform. That could be something, it's a robotic platform. So you should be able to perform the computation for a particular or specific hardware. So physical computing offered by UAL also offer electronics and that code is written uh, on the platform. That platform is also open source, that is Arduino. So one should also know this hardware per se because what happens in education is people are actually looking to write a program but they are not aware for what they are writing or for which machine they are writing the code. So the most dangerous thought that you can have as a creative person is to think of what you are doing. So don't actually take a step back and uh, uh, go or run away from the programming as, as a philosophy. It's again, it's a very creative thing. I think one should really understand what creative means. So um, with this, uh, I would like to uh, end this session. Thank you. We get it.